One, two, one, and two. Be patient, be patient, be patient. I've been conducting this orchestra for five years. The kids uh, in my orchestra have been playing for anywhere between one to five or six years, and they play uh, very well, and they love to perform, so any opportunity I get to have them perform, I do. The instruments get nervous, too. The instruments get stage fright, too. You guys all right? You guys got your music? <laughs> As an orchestra director at the San Gorgonio High School in Southern California, John Brannan loves to teach young students music. But for the last five years, his personal health has been deteriorating. When I'm doing the music, I, I don't feel pain. I don't feel the fatigue that I normally feel uh, being a kidney patient. Um, and it's just, just a nice escape for a couple of hours every time I'm involved in music. I got her. Good to get you, Joel. It was uh, two weeks before Thanksgiving in 2004, and and uh, the doctors told me that my both of my kidneys had failed, and I'd have to go on dialysis. You can get Joel right there. Jump up and get him. <laughs> I was very devastated. I was sad. I didn't know anything about the disease. Um, what I did know is that I knew that people died after a certain amount of time with kidney disease, and so I was very scared. In order to sustain his life, John has been undergoing dialysis treatment for the past five years while anxiously waiting for a donor. So I waited, and I waited, and I became more impatient because I was hearing about other people getting transplants, and so I took it upon myself to actively find a donor. And uh, after uh, two years of doing that, um, my donor uh, came up, a Lori, a friend of mine from high school, and she didn't think twice about helping me out. I was like, well, hey, you know, I've got two. She's been trying to lose weight anyway. It's got to be a couple pounds, right? And so I'm like, yeah, you can take mine, no problem. Because I'm not, a, the surgery idea doesn't really scare me or anything. And so I thought, oh, it's a friend who needs something. You know, by then I was like, okay, yeah, she's saying this now. I, you know, I've been through so many people before not coming through for me. I thought she was just going to be another person. But in talking with her several times, um, I began to understand that she was serious about helping me. I think as every step I took closer to it, I think he was just like, wow, she's, she's serious. She means it. But I'm just kind of like that anyway. Old high school friends, John and Lori both played an orchestra together. We, we kept in touch, then we lost touch, and then with the invention of Facebook, we found each other again. All our friends from uh, junior high school are all on Facebook, so we, uh, as soon as I knew he needed a kidney and I didn't think I was the right blood type, so um, we put it on Facebook, we posted it to the alumni groups for the high school and everything, and we just started beating all the bushes we could, trying to find everything, and then it turns out I'm the one that was the match. Being a mother of two, Lori made the decision with her husband to donate her kidney for her good childhood friend. Even though the decision was easy for her, she is still a bit nervous. I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't nervous, but I'm also excited. So, and I have my Jello supply already in the refrigerator to go, you know, mostly orange and red, because that's my favorite. The transplant will take place at Loma Linda University Medical Center. I'm so excited, I'm so happy and anxious. I haven't slept much the last few days, um, but I'm here. While Dr. Barone is preparing John for the surgery, the donor Lori is just about to finish her surgery in the room next door. She's in there now and we're just waiting for her um, to get done and then I go in. There's a legion of people praying for me, people I don't know, people I know, friends of friends, 
It's amazing, and I feel all that right now. After five years of waiting and nearly giving up, John's day has finally arrived. They put me in tights and a head wrap. So I'm dressed for the occasion. Off we go. The donor has a great, great kidney for, for John. The quality of life is going to be much better because he doesn't need to be doing the peritoneal dialysis every day like he's doing. And the other thing is the life is going to, the life span is going to prolong. This is patient Brandon John. Yep. Can you check your medical record number there? We are doing living and related donor kidney transplant. Agree. Lori's donated kidney is kept on ice as John is prepared to receive it. Yeah. We're going to prepare the, the arteries and the veins for the vascular um, anastomosis. It was procured laparoscopically an hour or two hours ago, right? And this entire kidney looks very good. In 2009, over 80,000 people were on the kidney transplant waiting list, but only 15% of those individuals received a new kidney from a donor, and less than 2% of those were from non-family members. So the kidney is here, so we're going to drop the kidney into the abdomen to do the first okay, anastomosis. Best pre kidney transplant is the one that comes from a living donor. And knowing that, including non-family members, the results are great. This will be a nice opportunity to encourage friends, non-family members, to donate to your friend. The, the donor artery, the donor renal artery, and the recipient iliac artery are connected, so now the kidney has blood from the recipient. And we're going to position in a nice way that the arteries, the artery of the kidney, the vein of the kidney, and the ureter are comfortable and not kink, and then function all these anastomosis very well. The case went wonderful. So the most important is, is, is to see how much urine is making, you know, soon after we um, reperfuse and, you know, release the clamps, and clamps into, the, into the kidney. So the blood went to the kidney so nicely and pink up and then it started making urine. And it's, it's continued making so much urine, you know, since that time. We are so happy with the results. Friends to friends usually are not the most common. With the time, maybe it will be uh, develop more awareness about the kidney disease, more awareness about donation, more awareness about transplant. And then also the recipients be probably less afraid or less embarrassed to ask the friends. Could you donate a, a kidney for me? Good morning. morning. How you doing, John? Good. Doing okay? You're making tons of urine, more than 10 liters. Yes. So yes. this kidney is good. Yes. It's excellent. All right. So let's see how, I'm so happy though. This organ is doing so well, yes. huh? All right. All right, the incision looks good. It's very clean, huh? And your abdomen looks soft, right? Hmm? 
Your legs are okay. Getting a little stiff now. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to walk today, so they're going to get stretchy. You stretch your legs. Okay. Um, but otherwise, you look very really good to me. Yeah, I feel good. Mm -hmm. I think you are going to be uh, going home very soon. Thank All right? Have a great day, though. Okay? Good. Wonderful. So, I'm only getting nine grams of sugar. Okay. Go for the boiler. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Ten months later, John and Lori meet up at a local deli. Oh yeah, that's oh, no, the, yeah you gotta be cool. Oh, it. Yeah. Wait, it has to make the plunk sound. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. Thank care. you, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. See, a day like today is one of these days where, you know, we can just really enjoy it. Everything with me, I, I feel like I'm back to normal, the way I was before I got sick. And I have a whole lot of energy and everyone's noticing, everyone's saying, you're this, you're that, you've got color. I didn't even know I didn't have any color in my skin. I was concerned because I started feeling better before she did. And I was like, hey. <laughs> He's like, but, you know, what are you doing? I'm just laying around taking pain pills. What are you doing, jogging? Yeah, yeah. For me, there weren't really any surprises. Um, but yet, I was still amazed at how well everything went. And, um, you know, little to no complications. And, uh, and now I'm snapping my fingers and here we are 10 months later. So uh, it, really no surprises, everything went very well. She's my bud. And she's a great person. I mean, she, when, when I went to her and, and mentioned that I needed a kidney, that I was waiting, she didn't even think twice. She said, well, what can I do to help? It's kind of cool. And for the last five years he's been dying and now he's yeah. not even sick. Yeah. You know? uh, I, I'm very blessed to have Lori in my life because, because of that. I mean, you see what kind of person she is. And, um, you know, I just never in a million years would have thought that it would have happened this way because I was looking in other directions and um, God saw that it go in this direction. So it's becoming a little bit more uh, um, uh, acceptable for people to donate organs, but it's still not where it should be. But, um, you know, when I hear stories, success stories like that, I, you know, Number one, I think about Lori, and then, you know, I just think about this whole experience. It was life-changing. If you needed another kidney or another one or another one, I'd do lungs or livers or whatever. If I've got some, that's, you know. Yeah, my plan is to use up all of her organs. <laughs> <laughs>